These are the foundational baselines for underground house and techno, and an absolute must know for any producer doing this stuff. Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna break down five essential baselines that I think everyone who makes underground house and techno needs to know. These are like the foundation or building blocks that most baselines that you're gonna hear in tracks are built upon. And in many cases, they're gonna be used just in their simplest form that I'm gonna show you today. As always, there's a link in the description if you wanna download the project from my Patreon. That way you can get in there, take a deeper dive, look at the drums that I've used, the synths, the MIDI, all that kind of stuff. Patreon's an amazing platform to support creators and supporting me on there is one of the best ways that you can ensure that I keep bringing these videos for the channel. All right, now let's get into Ableton and make some bass. All right, so here we are inside live and I've put together a little beat for the demonstration. So let's just take a quick listen to that. A nice little deep thing, <laughs> as I usually do. And as always, the link is in the description if you want to download the project, so you can go in there, see how I've made all these things and see what's going on. I'm using Trillion for the bass patches, so I'll freeze everything in case you don't have it, and then you've got it as audio, and you can unfreeze it, see the MIDI, all that kind of thing. So what I've done is I've made five different bass loops, which I feel are like the kind of key building blocks for bass in like underground house and techno. By that, I include genres like deep house, afro house, tribal house, organic house, House, progressive house, not the EDM crap, melodic house and techno, you know, this kind of thing. The first one we've got here is an offbeat bass line. So this is super simple. Look at the MIDI. We're in the key of F minor. We've just got a note happening every beat on the offbeat. So on the same position as you'd have your main kind of open hat. So let's just play this with the kick. So it sounds really straight and kind of like quite pounding, which it is, but let's play it with all the other elements and you'll see how it actually helps to emphasize the groove on some of the more swung elements. Because the kick and the bass are so straight and robotic, it actually helps to kind of emphasize the swing on the percussion and some of the hats and stuff. It gives the track quite a kind of serious and driving vibe. I really like it for this kind of groove. It takes it from being something that's quite deep and could be quite chilled to something that's definitely a bit more dance floor focused. So that's offbeat bass line. Next, we've got the 16th bass line. So again, simple MIDI, this time playing on every 16th note. What I've done here is play with the velocity a little bit to emphasize these offbeat notes and kind of tuck in some of the other notes, similar to what you might do with like a closed hat or a shaker playing the same pattern. So let's take a listen to that. So a bit more of a serious kind of techno style groove. And let's play it with the loop. So definitely more of a peak time kind of thing. This 16th note bass line is quite popular in genres like progressive house, melodic techno, melodic house, that type of thing. It gives like a really peak time feel. I've created a couple of variations so you can see like how this can be developed quite easily and give you more options with a different feel. So let's take a look at variation one. So the MIDI goes like this. We've still got the velocity changes the same, but every second offbeat is playing up an octave. So let's see how that sounds. So it's still got the intensity of the first one, but it's a bit more interesting and it gives a bit more groove, quite hypnotic. So let's have a look at variation number three. In this case, we've got the first two notes playing a low octave and the second two notes playing a higher octave. So that's gonna give us more of a bouncy groove and swing. Let's take a listen. One thing you might wanna do here is split the bass line into two parts, like a top bass and a sub. With the top bass, you'd cut out everything below 100 hertz or so and have it doing this pattern. Then with the sub, you'd have it playing this straight pattern. That way you're gonna maintain intensity with the sub and the low end's gonna be more even. Also on this, I'm using quite a heavy side chain.
If I don't duck that with the side chain, these two notes here are going to really interfere with the kick. So it's important to get them out of the way. If you're using a side chain plugin like LFO tool or Kickstart, then you can use like this split here, which ducks it below a certain frequency. So. That maintains the intensity in the mids, but ducks out the sub. So let's have a listen to that with the groove. In this case, I feel like it works better with the whole thing being ducked. All right, moving on. This one I've called Groover. This is super common. It's one of my favorite bass lines. I use it in a lot of tracks to some kind of variation. So it's similar to the offbeat bass line, but we've taken every first note and moved it forward. So it's in the 16th note position, which creates a lot more swing and groove. So let's have a listen to this. And then with the loop. So I've got these notes happening on the first and third beat, and they are totally optional, and it just depends on the track. In this case, I felt like it sounded a bit empty without them. I'll show you. But with a bigger kick or a different bass sound, they may be totally unnecessary. You notice here that I've just pulled them slightly forward off the grid, and that is so that the side chain catches the transient of the bass note. Now, what I've got here is another couple of variations. Variation one, pretty similar, but we've just taken this note here and brought it forward. And this just creates like a bit of differentiation in the second half of the bar and gives it a bit more of an interesting groove. So this is one that I use quite a lot. One thing I like to do is have it play a little bit differently, maybe duplicate it and then take off the last note or something like that, which gives it a little differentiation from the first to the second bar. So on that last note, you could replace that with like a tom hit or a chord stab or a bass with a different sound. And it's going to create a lot more interest in your loop. So let's have a look at variation number three. Now this pattern's actually really popular. Artists like David Penn and Gorgon City use this a lot. So you can see the first half is like the groover pattern and the second half is like the offbeat bass line. So let's have a listen to that. It's still got the groove, but with a bit more drive. Kind of like a reverse mullet. Party in the front, business in the back. Okay, up next we've got a sustained bass line. So what this is doing is playing long, sustained notes. You need the right bass sound. A plucky bass sound is not going to work. You need a bass sound that has a lot of sustain. Now what's happening here, we're still in the key of F minor. You notice I've got the F, I've got the G sharp, and I've got this C. The C could also be here, in which case we'd have a minor triad chord. But for this pattern, I've inverted the C as it sounds more full-bodied when it's played in the lower octave. So let's take a listen. So it gives it like a really deep, moody vibe. Quite a popular technique to go along with this in Afro house, melodic house, melodic techno, progressive, is to have the bass playing like this with a low tom playing this groover pattern. So that gives you some groove in the low end to kind of dance to with also this kind of moody, deep vibe from the sustained bass line. Now I've got a different variation here. I've just taken these notes here and duplicated them up an octave. There's some glide on the synth. So that way it's going to glide up an octave just before it plays the next note. Let's take a listen to that. So it makes that pattern quite a bit more interesting. Something that's really popular in melodic techno with artists like Stefan Botzen is to take these and actually pitch them up a couple of octaves. So 
you might have them playing like a little twinkly melody at the end of each bar and it gives like a real signature sound to your track. Moving on to our final bass line which is the legato bass line. So the reason I've called this a legato bass line is because all of the notes are connected or legato. The next note begins exactly as the current note ends. So let's have a listen to that. Because I've got a bit of glide on the synth, it really sounds like the notes are kind of blending into one another. This has been quite popular in Tech House over the last couple of years. Hotsons 82's track Heater has a bass line like this. A lot of the stuff that artists like Salado were putting out a couple of years ago had bass lines like this. So something that works really well to create intensity and interest in the track is to automate the cutoff of a filter with a bass line like this. So let's take a listen as I move the cutoff on this EQ. So I mean you can just hit record arm on the track and then record that and move it along and kind of record yourself doing some automation that you can use in your track. So obviously this is in no way a comprehensive list of every bass line in underground house and techno, but you can see that most bass lines in most tracks are built on some kind of variation or combination of these. They're like the building blocks of most bass lines. So as I said before, there's a link in the description where you can download the project file. If you want to go in, have a closer look at the MIDI, see how these are put together, have a look at the beat, that kind of thing. Download it, get in there, have some fun, enjoy it. All right guys, there you go. Simple, huh? Let me know in the comments, which is your favorite from these styles of bass lines? If you're looking for a bit more detail, then check out this video I did where I break down some of the bass lines from Hotson's 82's biggest tracks. All right, well that's it from me today, guys. Catch you next time. Peace. Okay.